Hello and welcome to the case of the day. I'm Dr. Crowley and today we're shifting gears a little bit again and that we're not going to be discussing a specific case or patient but we're going to discuss a new instrument we have in our office called a Keratograph 5 that we use mostly to diagnose dry eye patients. It does have a lot of the capabilities that are used for measuring the curvature of the cornea. It has a lot of contact lens fitting uh, parameters where you can look at a contact lens on the eye and make sure it fits well, especially at bifocal contacts where you can see a segment height that you can line it up with this system. Uh, it also has pupil size that will measure that sometimes we use that measurement for prior to LASIK surgery. But what we're going to discuss today is mostly about dry eyes. So we have lots of people come with dry eyes and we actually have a lip of flow and a lip of view machine that we have s sort of gone over in the past but we'll maybe re-go into more depth in the future. But we use this machine because it measures several different attributes of your tear film. And so we're going to go over to show you what that is. Your tear film is made up of actually three layers. There's a bottom mucus layer, then a water layer, and an oily layer. So we try to find out what part of your tear film is not correct so then we can treat the underlying problem or cause of your dry eyes because if all you're doing is putting tears in your eyes which is a good thing to do you're not really getting down to the reason why you have dry eyes. You're not treating the cause of your dry eyes which long term you need to do because if you don't do something the dry eye problem will slowly over time months and years of time get worse and worse and worse we actually now have young kids coming in with dry eyes because they're sitting there gaming all day long and they stare at what they're looking at and they're, they stop blinking and then their eye dries out and then it starts this inflammation that starts the whole dry eye problem so we actually have young people coming in so the first thing that we're going to do is go over some of the tests that this allows us to do So the first thing I'm going to show you is this is a keratograph or topography and it measures exactly the curvature of your cornea. We use these measurements typically for cataract surgery. You use this to, for uh, fitting contact lenses and this shows us exactly the shape of your eye, the contour of your eye and so this is uh, a typical keratograph or topography of someone's eye. So we're going to go to the next test, which this is measuring the lipid layer of your tear film. So now we're looking at the amount of colors that are on the ring. So when this shines a light onto the surface of your eye, then we're looking at how colorful is that pattern. If it's just dull gray, all these little rings are dull gray, then you don't have any lipid layer to your tear film. If it has a lot of color to it, then you, then you have a lot of the lipid layer there and the lip of view machine actually measures that layer down to microns of detail. So this tells us that this person has a moderate amount of uh, oil or lipid layer because there is some color but not as much as you would normally like to see. So now we'll go to the next test and this is actually a movie. We're not, I don't think the movie is going to show very well but this takes a movie and you can watch the tear film move around on the surface of the eye as the person blinks. And so if your tear film is very uh, uh, thick because there's not enough liquid layer then the, then the motion is very limited whereas if you have lots of tears the motion is a lot. So this is another parameter that we use to um, evaluate your dry eyes. And then the next thing we're going to go in and is look at the tear meniscus height. So, this will measure tiny detail of how much tear film is present from here up to where the edge. So this tear film lake, uh, we can measure down to tiny little parts of a millimeter. So this is 0.26 millimeters in height and that's sort of the limit of lower, lower limit of normal. Anything below that is dry, anything above that is pretty normal. So we can measure exactly how dry somebody's eye is and how much tear meniscus they have. So then we'll go to the tear breakup time. So the tear breakup time calculates how many seconds we have someone blink a couple of times and then we have them not blink and then we count, the machine counts, 
how long does it take before the tear film breaks apart? And so it calculates how long that is, and this was 8.6 seconds, which also is at the sort of lower limit of normal. And it tells us exactly what part of the tear film, where it was, and located where the tear film started to break apart. So it's watching these mires, these rings, and wherever it starts to fall apart, that's when it stops the timer and it tells us where it happened. What part of the cornea? So the next one is a redness test. And so it calculates how red are the eyes. And so it gives us a reading and it gives 1.1 and it gets us as a bulb or the redness on the on the white part of the eye, a limbal redness is 0.7 and that is the temporal side is 0 0.7, 1.0 on the left and so uh, that tells us exactly how red someone's eye is and which that tells us how inflamed their eye is from dry eyes. And then the next test which is a really important test is that actually we can measure and take a 3D image of their meibomian glands and so what this shows us is, if you see this, we'll try to zoom in, you can see these glands right here. And these glands empty out and tiny little open on the edge of the lid, and these glands secrete the oil or lipid into your tear film. So you can see this, there's a, these glands right here have died, and this gland's a little short, this gland's a little short. These glands are pretty normal over here. So this person has mild to moderate dry eyes, due to the meibomian glands not secreting the proper amount of oil into the tear film and we can actually photograph the quality of their glands. And so the last thing is just a photo. So if, we, if there was a lid lesion here, someone has skin cancer or something like that, then we could take a picture of that so we could track the lesion and what it's doing. So this is all the different things that this will do, and so it allows us to diagnose the type of dry eye someone has, and then we come up with a treatment protocol based on what type of dry eye that they have. This person has some meibomian gland disease, so therefore we would treat the meibomian glands to try to make their dry eye better. If someone had a normal meibomian gland, but their liquid layer was thin, then we would treat them because that portion of their tear film is abnormal with different things. And so now it's just not going to a doctor's office and saying I, my eyes are dry or we find out, we examine you and we show, tell you that your eyes are dry, but, and just use some tears, but now we can get specific about the treatment. So if you have any questions about how we examine someone for dry eyes and the different types of treatment, you can always contact us through the website. If not, may God bless you with healthy eyes and great vision.